Okay, we're at the Auditorium Theater tonight. It's Wednesday night, November 14th, and uh, Bob Dylan's still going. So this is, uh, we're going to preach to these people here tonight at the Bob Dylan concert. Tonight, but we're here to give out the gospel. We're here to give out the gospel to all men because that day is going to come upon you swift. It's going to come upon you unawares as a thief in the night. And right now, today, folks, people don't care in this world too much about anything. An 87-year-old woman's dead because somebody hit her with a car. She didn't know she, uh, she was going off into eternity. 87 years old, and they still don't know who hit her. And then to be callous to the gospel tonight, folks, you don't know when your night's up. You don't know when your day's up. How pitiful is that tonight, folks, that you live 87 years old and then you get picked off by a car picking up your mail, and yet you want to talk about uh, mocking and blaspheming the gospel when you come by? No, I think tonight, folks, you better get serious. You better get serious towards the gospel tonight because you have an appointment with God and you don't know when that day is. Your life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And the wages of sin is death. And if you die in your sin, if you die without... I don't want to use the term believing because somebody already told me that uh, Bob Dylan was a believer. But the difference is, folks, Jesus said you must be born again. God says... To be saved, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to use the word believer because people today use the word believer like, oh, you could believe on Jesus, but do anything you want to do and live any old way you want, and you can't. And all things become new. When you're born again, you don't live the same life you lived as a sinner, as a pothead, as a rebellious hippie you live for the kingdom of God old things are passed away behold all things are become new passed away folks born again that's what God demands of men to be born again to live righteous and holy for him once they have the gift of God because he gives them of his spirit those that believe will be saved, and those that believe will be damned. God is not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want any of you to perish tonight. He doesn't want you to die in your sin tonight. Don't live your life void of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. It is appointed unto men once to die. You're Life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And the Word of God says also that when Jesus Christ comes back the second time, He's coming as a thief in the night. He's coming as a thief. And you could be here tonight and somebody could break up your house. And when you go in, you see that somebody broke into your house. That's how it's going to be when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. He's coming back in an instant and sudden. And Jesus said in his word that there be some standing here that will not even taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in the glory, in his glory. That's when they're going to taste death, when they realize that they lived their whole life void of God, void of seeking the righteousness of God, and then realizing that it's done with. You have an appointed time. It's appointed unto men wants to die. But after this comes the judgment, and you need to be serious about that tonight, because those that are not concerned for their souls tonight... God's going to come upon them as a thief. See, a lot of people, they, they try to predict when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back. He's got a day that only he himself knows, the Father in heaven that knows that appointed time. Even when Jesus was on the earth, he didn't know 
the day, the day or the hour. But my Father which is in heaven, that's what he said. No man knoweth the day or the hour. And when Jesus Christ comes, he's coming as a thief in the night. And I hope you're going to be ready for that day, folks, because Jesus is nothing like the, the world teaches today. Jesus is nothing like the world talks about God today, the, the cable television God that they have in nice suits and big hairdos. Pot smoking generation. No, folks, you need to repent of your sins. When I got saved, I grew up in the mid-70s, 80s, rock and roll music. And when I got saved, uh, marijuana had to go. Alcohol had to go. Fornication had to go. Idolatry had to go. And in a sense, folks, that's what rock and roll is. It's idolatry. That's right. Rock and roll is idolatry. Don't tell me it's not. I used to have my room filled with posters of uh, my idols. I wasn't thinking about God back then. Well, I knew about God, but I wasn't thinking about just living for my own pleasure. I wanted to be like my idols. And then... 40 years later, people are still coming to see their idols. They've not changed in their lives. You need repentance tonight. You need the repentance towards God. You need to seek the righteousness which is in Christ Jesus. You need to be saved, born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to have the Spirit of God that is only given by God. That's the gift of God. If you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. It doesn't matter if you say you're a believer. It doesn't matter if you say you go to church, that you uh, work on the soup line, you give to charity. It doesn't matter, folks. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the... Spirit is spirit. And Jesus said that you have to have his spirit to be saved. You have to have the spirit of God, the seed of God. The word of God says that you're either going to be born again or you're going to die twice. This is the second death. Those that go to hell, it's the second death. Jesus said you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Then listen to the music because he's, he's, he's explaining the same, right? No, he's not. Yeah. He's not explaining what I'm explaining tonight. Go to serve somebody. No, he's not explaining why are the people coming here. This is a Bible study tonight. The pleasure and the idols. This is a Bible study tonight. You're coming here to learn about the Lord. They're not going to be singing songs. Maybe he has content in that about that. But... That's not going to bring you to salvation. The content of his music, he's not going to have an altar call in here tonight and say, how many people would like to receive Jesus Christ tonight? And if he does that, call the Democrat and Chronicle tomorrow, or call Bob Lonsberry tomorrow, so I could be shocked and, and uh, repent that this was of God when it's not, folks. See, that's the exact thing I'm talking about tonight. People got this false image of God as they think they're going to a rock concert and they're learning about Jesus. Hey, how about you want to uh, go to church on Sunday where they read the, the Word of God, where they tell homosexuals are going to hell, transgenders? Yeah, you're going to come to church then if the preacher's up there preaching that? Is that what Bob, you think Bob Dylan got to be a, a millionaire and this great musician because uh, he accepts... Down to the oh man, here, here you defending your idol over Jesus Christ. Defending your idol over you. How many days do you have, old man? How many days and you're going to stand before God? That's right. You better go home and repent and call upon Jesus. And you better worship Jesus and not Bob Dylan. See, that's what I mean. We got these leftover hippies. They're, they're, hey, you can at least hear the word of God. But no, what do you want to do? You want to argue with somebody talking about God. That's right. That's your idol. 
And that's why we're here preaching, to remind you of that tonight. That's exactly why we're here, just to remind you. And you have, you have your... Yeah, you, you living, dead, it doesn't matter. In fact, uh, God says that you're just like, you know what your idols are? They don't breathe, they don't hear, they don't talk. <laughs> and the people that worship them are the same. There's no content to them because they're dead. They're going to die in their sins. They don't have a spirit of God. They're empty shells. Yeah, we come to warn you tonight of the judgment of God to come. And the only way you can escape that judgment is through Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel. Call upon the name of the Lord that you might be saved. So you don't like the word vengeance tonight. Well, that means you don't love Jesus Christ tonight. Because... Jesus Christ said that he's coming in flaming fire to take vengeance on them that know not God and those that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a, that's a word that Jesus Christ uses. In fact, when Jesus walked on this earth, he opened the book of Isaiah and he read out of it and he stopped right in the point where he was talking about the day of vengeance and the day of the Lord. He stopped because that prophecy wasn't fulfilled yet. But one day you're going to have to answer to Almighty God, folks. And he, you say, oh, why? You know, see, you've believed in your satanic God that says Jesus loves everybody. He doesn't love you in your sin, and he is going to bring vengeance on all his enemies. All those, you know, especially in this, uh, the, the people coming here tonight, you know, the happy hippie age, you know, of Bob Dylan, the beatniks, I'm sorry to tell you, pot smokers, oh, they had this image of Jesus that they made that has nothing to do with the Word of God. Jesus wasn't some happy hippie walking around in sandals, uh, smoking pot, saying he loved you just the way you are. Come unto me and believe on me. See, that's, that's the believing. And I'm not going to say, because I don't know Bob Dylan, but I'll tell you right now, that's to me his character of belief in the Word of God. Like a happy hippie belief. Jesus said you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. If, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. But what does the Word of God say about money? For the love of money. Just same thing with uh, Frankie Valley. The guy's 84 years old. He's still going around. Bob Dylan, I, he's up there. I don't know how old he is, but I'm going to say he's probably in his 70s, probably, at least. He's 77, man. Okay, so thank you, sir. 77. See, he should be home relaxing. No, he's, got, he's running out of money. He's running out of... Uh, paying his bills so he's got to get your money from you he's got to get your money because he's running out of money 77 are you guys working at 77 no nah, you're coming to see bob dylan to help him pay his rent so don't tell me about bob dylan being a believer he loves money that's why he's here tonight he's a lover of money he's a lover of your money but you better be a lover of jesus christ because that's the only way you're going to enter into the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. That's you tonight. Fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind, revilers. Yep, see, filthy mouth leftover hippie right there. That's right. Leftover, still got long hair like a, like a girl. Hey, it's time to cut your hair, old man. Try to cut your hair. You look like a, an old, old woman girl having a bad hair day. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're not here to entertain you tonight. We're meeting you just the way you are. Folks, see, you've had this false interpretation of Jesus going to hold your hand and say, Que sera, sera. No, it ain't going to happen, folks. God's going to show himself forward to the forward. That's right. We're not going to 
I'll pamper you tonight. You've had enough pampering. You're on your way to hell. You're on your way to hell. You need the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Yeah, there is a time and a place to um, preach a different way, but that's not here tonight because pe too many people have been giving you false report of what Jesus is in, in the kingdom of God. This is a serious thing. Serious thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Hey, come on. Hey, come a little closer. Don't be back there. See, we got, now we got the loudmouth women going. We got the old hippie men going. Loudmouth, rebellious women uh, in the 60s. They got their uh, right to vote. Now uh, they, they want to be equal to men. Now, uh, now they want to rule the world. Yeah, well, folks, Jesus Christ is going to put you in your place. God's going to send rebellious women to hell. What's this chick God look like? Yeah, except, yeah, you're a wicked man. Hey, you look, what, you're, who's your idol, Jerry Garcia? That's what you look, you look like, you look like your idol. Yeah, but you, who's the chick God? You're going to find out. You'll find out on that day when your mouth is stopped and you're guilty before God because you wouldn't listen to the preaching of the gospel. You wouldn't listen to you are a sinner and that God's going to bring vengeance on those that know not God and obey not his gospel. That's right. You're going to be accountable to that, folks. So if you want to continue acting filthy and dirty and profane, go right ahead. But Jesus Christ is holy and righteous, and he died for your sins so that you could be holy and righteous. He that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's why you want to just live. You don't want to come to the light because then you would have to be living righteous. But you like your unrighteous life the way it is. He that doeth truth cometh to the light. That is deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God and except you repent you will all likewise perish How you doing? go ahead Jim what are you guys on the man? What's the preaching the gospel tonight warning sinners that they need to be saved yeah, yeah which my name's Kevin could I give you a gospel track to read oh, no thanks. coming here to go to the concert tonight so, um, you don't like Bob Dylan uh, no I'm, I'm I'm saved I don't listen to worldly music I hear you. I listen to things that glorify Jesus Christ. I like to listen to that too. But you need to be born again. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He shed his own blood for you so that you could be saved someday. And don't leave this earth without it, young man. I'm going to call you young man because you're younger than me. I think you look it. <laughs> so, but this is how you want to approach it, though? This is, this is uh, the way Jesus Christ told us to do it to go out and preach the gospel but we we do it in other we do it in other environments too what do you mean you do the same I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses oh you're a Jehovah Witness wow I spent a lot of my time well you can't even be a good practicing Jehovah Witness to come here Jehovah Witnesses wouldn't believe in this. Jehovah Witness is a false religion anyways. They don't even believe that Jesus came in the flesh. That's not true. That's what the word of, the word of God? Yeah. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word was God. Word was God. No, that's the new that's the that's your new world order translation. Well, they changed also, it. It's also a lot of other translations. So, but Jesus is God. He came in the divine. flesh. The word was Jesus, divine. And yeah. Jesus is the word of God in Revelation. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah. so... I'm just saying, I, I, but you, you, but I'm just telling you right now. I'm very surprised to even say somebody that says they're a Jehovah Witness would even be in a place like this because I never. What's that? Yeah. Well, you, so what's your uh, which Kingdom Hall do you uh, go to? Uh, down towards the uh, Finger Lakes. Oh, it's the Finger Lakes, huh? So do you go to all their conferences? Do you go every Sunday? So how do you become a Jehovah Witness? I mean, do you have to be baptized? 
baptized as a Jehovah Witness to... Well, doesn't every Christian have to be baptized? Well, not to be saved. You, you're baptized in the Spirit of God, and then bap water baptism is an act of obedience because Jesus Christ said that it's an act of obedience to obey Him. But Jesus said, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sins. I don't want to miss my concert, bud. You guys have a nice day. Stay warm. Okay. Jesus said you'll be hated by all men on account of my name. And if you want to go to a concert and claim that you're a Christian and then come out and criticize us, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> hypocrite, that's what you are. What are you doing for God? Listen to your idol, Bob Dylan. You're a hypocrite. You're saved. And one of the people that are not going to inherit the kingdom of God is revilers. They had a lot of revilers here tonight. They have a lot of people here thinking that, uh, you know, they know God and yet live in the world and then cheer that they love the things of the world. That's not the God of the scriptures. Uh, we come out here warning all men tonight of the judgment of Jesus Christ to come. He shed his own blood for your sins. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and you cannot be saved any other way, folks. You have to come by the way of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood on the cross, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So if you truly get saved, then you become a new creature. You put your old things away, your old rock idols away, your... Uh, alcohol away, your fornication away, your adultery away. But see, that's why we come out preaching, because you laugh at it. You laugh, you laugh at your sin. You take confidence in your sin. But we come out here to warn you because God's not going to put up with that, folks. You're going to stand before him. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this comes the judgment. You have a judgment coming, and it's not going to be a joke in that day. God says that every mouth will be stopped and all the world's going to become guilty before God. That's what's going to happen on the day of judgment, folks. There's not going to be nobody talking back to God. He's going to open his books. Uh, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. God gave the law to show men their sin, and then he's going to use his law to show men that they're guilty of that they deserve hell. We, you know, we go out sometimes and we have banners that say, ask me why you deserve hell. You deserve hell because you're a sinner and you're a lawbreaker of God's law. You have broken God's law and we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law that every mouth may be stopped. And you know what the law is going to do? It's going to stop your mouth in the sight of God and you're going to be guilty. But we come tonight warning men, calling them to repentance that they will call on the living God, Jesus Christ, who shed his own blood for your sins. And we've already heard it tonight, all talking about Bob Dylan being a believer, but uh, there's going to be no Bible study going on here tonight. People came to see their idol tonight. Yeah, see, folks, a lot of you tonight, you think we're here for your entertainment. No, you came here to be entertained tonight, but we're not here for your entertainment. If you want to have a serious conversation, we will have a serious conversation. But you think you want to come here and, uh, and come up to us and uh, be a part of your entertainment tonight. That's what you think of Jesus Christ tonight. We come here to warn men of their sins tonight. Warn men of their unrighteousness towards God. And the soon return of Jesus Christ is going to hold all men accountable to their lives and the lives that they lived. And Jesus said you must be born again. And, uh, you know, and today... Too. We, we got people in, in the line that, you know, if they, oh, yeah, it's great to hear that, but I'm going to just uh, go do the things of the world today. Yeah, I know Jesus, but I never really changed in my life or changed in my activities or uh, my witness towards God. Well, one day Jesus says that he's coming in flaming fire to take vengeance on them that know not God. And that's a lot, a lot of use tonight. You know not God. Some of you claim you know God, but... But you don't live 
You don't live for God. You don't live for His righteousness, holiness. See, to you, to a lot of you today, you just like different things, being entertained by different things. But you're not going to be entertained by God. This word that we hold in our hand is the living word of God that proclaims Jesus Christ, testifies of the living God, Jesus Christ. And you're going to be responsible and accountable to that living God someday. And that's why we don't give some of you the time of day while we're preaching because draw, God has to draw you to that. And we'll know if you're serious about it or not. We'll know. That's why I told one person, you know, they want to show their seriousness, rip up your ticket, and we'll go talk about it. Because you can't have God and have the world. And if you really want to get saved and you really want the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then there's some things you have to forsake in your life to know Jesus Christ. Like your sin. That's why he died. He died for your sin. Guess what has to be forsaken if you get saved? Your sin. Go and sin no more. See, are you willing to do that tonight? you willing to give up your sin? That's what repentance is. That's what repentance means. Oh, they didn't teach you that in the church, the evangelical church you go to? That you can't continue in sin and know Jesus? That's why Jesus died for men's sins, to make them free from their sins. Not to keep them in their sin, and that's why a lot of you are deluded today. You're deceived. And then one day you're going to come under the delusion of God because you did not receive the love of the truth. Because you did not receive the love of the truth. And God's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And we've already seen that here tonight. See, you, if you want to know the truth, you'll stop and listen. You'll stop and hear. But, you, you know... Like one girl came by and then she wanted to think, oh, well, I just want to talk to you and know about God. Nah, she don't want to know about God. She just wants me to be her entertainment for tonight. We're here warning men of the righteous judgment to come. And that righteous judgment is going to be based on, the, on Jesus Christ, the righteous, who never had any sin in his life, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's right, Jesus Christ had no sin. He wasn't a happy hippie walking around, uh, you know, holding hands with the, the flower children and uh, playing uh, folk music in the speakeasy generation. That's right, folks. It's time to get serious for God because Jesus Christ could come at any time. No man knoweth the day or the hour. I just got done saying that to somebody. Oh, when is he coming? When is he coming? No man knoweth the day or the hour. See, you don't want to know the Word of God. When's he coming? He's not going to tell you when he's coming. He wants you to be saved right now. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ calls people to repent now, today. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's right, because God says, let us reason about your sin now. That's what God wants to reason with men about their sin, not live in their sin. Oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus, and, uh, but yet I'm going to Bob Dylan concert. No, it doesn't work that way, folks. If you have a false Jesus, it works that way. You... See, folks, and see, we're here doing the work of God. We're here doing the, the will of God, preaching to all men, warning them of the judgment to come. Because there is a real judgment to come. It is appointed unto men once to die. But after this comes the judgment. The wages of sin is death. And God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He wants them to be saved. The will of God is for all men everywhere to repent and to believe the gospel. The wages of sin is death. And that's why it's imperative tonight for you to be saved. Imperative tonight for you to be saved. Jesus Christ, the righteous, for by grace are you saved through faith. 
You have to have the faith to be saved. And it's by God's grace once you get that faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How does that faith come? By hearing the Word of God. But instead of hearing the Word of God, a lot of people just want to interrupt the Word of God rather than hearing the Word of God. Hearing the Word of God is what will save you. Hearing the Word of God will save you, but your minds are clouded with deceit, deception. And that's right, you just, and that, that gives my illustration just perfectly that you're here to honor your idols tonight and not the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if uh, Bob Dylan's not going to tell you to stop sinning tonight, but Jesus Christ has, but you don't want to stop sinning. Because he that doeth evil hateth the light, and neither cometh to the light. Because he loves darkness. Sinners love darkness, and they continue in sin. But if a man repents, he turns to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Repentance means that you're sorry for your sin and then you go and sin no more. That's what repentance is, but we don't have a world today where they teach repentance. And then when you repent, then God's righteousness comes upon you, His Spirit comes upon you, so you can live holy and righteous. And that's what, that's what the kingdom of God is, folks. It's a spirit that saves men. It's a spirit that indwells men, that gives them the power to live the, the will of God by the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that transforms and transforms a man and makes him new. You men that were are saved were dead in trespasses and sins, and then the blood of Jesus Christ says that they were as circumcised. God talks about a spiritual circumcision that takes place in a man's heart when he's saved and he becomes a new creature in Christ. He becomes a new creature in Christ because he has the Spirit of God to do that which is righteous. And he's born after the seed of God. He doesn't continue in fornication and adultery and pot smoking and cigarette smoking and drinking alcohol. That's right, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Revilers will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.